In this episode, I'm going to talk about framing. I mean, I'm focusing on caves, and obviously there are other ways of framing. I mean, here is a frame, if you like. You've got this, this side, and that, that side. It's a kind of a decent frame if you use it right. But you've got to bear in mind, when I'm making these, they're only meant to be about 15 minutes long, and normally I would take 15 minutes just finding a decent place to take a photo. And I don't want these to be like five hours long, which they would be if I started messing about. But we've got a cave here. Don't really think that much, but this one here, I just looked at it before I started screaming, obviously. Started recording, sorry. Oh, something else I want to point out as well that I forgot to mention. Um, photo mode. This, well, I've just sent it down a little bit, but it defaults to 100, so you get the vignetting here. Now, I'm not sure if that's always been the case. I've not really taken much notice of it before, but I realised that the other day. So you want to be taking that down to 10, to, its, to the limit. You still get a little bit of vignetting, which I can't understand why you can't take it down to zero. It's a bit strange, but never mind. But this is what I mean about framing. So, we've got a cave here, and we've got a planet there. Hopefully, I can get in this cave. This looks very interesting cave, actually. There's plenty of colour, plenty of scope here. I'm going to have to look out here, see what you can see out here. You know, there's a nice frame. Play around with light, you get a nice frame there. But we'll go th with this one. So, we've got a frame. Peeking out. Peeking out, you've got a nice mountain there. The only thing is, you've got that horrible thing there. Let's pretend that's not there. Like I said, resources, nothing like resources to take you out of the immersion. To remind you, you're in no man's sky. And I've always said, like I said, I try to take pictures that are not no man's sky pictures. If you get what I'm saying. So, we've got a nice pinkish light. You're in a cave, you want a bit of light coming in there. You want something to pick it out. It either this side or that side, depending on which one looks better. So you've got texture on one side. That looks quite interesting. Take it a bit lower. You've got some interesting light playing around there. That's a bit bright. Remember, these are not perfect examples. These are just examples to show you what to do. If I was looking for perfect examples, like I said, these would be five hours long. And I don't want to do that. So, well, I'm, I think I'll try one that side first, see which one's best. Hmm. That is interesting. You've got a bit of a, a bit of a divot here. It gives a bit of a shadow. And then again, you lose the planet slightly. So we'll go. That is nice, but I think I prefer this side. Yeah, I prefer that side. So we can hide that actually. We'll have we'll have the site. Yeah, we'll hide that resource. We'll hide that resource, and even maybe it's not that much there. Though. That's a trouble. It's a bit plain. But it'll do, we'll hide that resource there. We'll see what the light looks like directly behind that moon. Take it back a fraction. You just I've just gotta play around with this light a bit more. Take it down a bit. Still a little bit too much. Maybe down a bit more. Still a little bit too much. Down a bit more. Now we've got a bit of light on the water get lower this is the finicky thing the d-pad is not very good your best bet is to move it forward and then do that and sort of seesaw your way down to get it where you want it to be but let's see if I can let's see if I can get that water light playing on that water a bit more 
Mm, it's a little bit pixelated there, which is unfortunate. So this is a frame I was talking about. You can get closer to that. But I quite like I like that little slit. I like the minimalistic nature of that. Might even be better off. Oh, I do like that. We can play around to get the night light coming in. That's a nice shape. That's a nice shape. See how the cut see how that is almost become the only part of the picture. And this part here, the way it goes down. That is quite nice. I'm gonna play around with that a bit more. That is nice. That is nice. We've got a little bit of light going across here now. Stretches it across. That's nice. I can hide that. I can hide that resource slightly still. And uh, maybe I don't need to at night. It's not quite as pronounced. So let's play around with this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now we're losing the shape of it. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Well, that's an interesting line. It's an interesting dark line across. That's an interesting dark line across, but I prefer... I mean, the moonlight there is quite nice. Maybe a tad too dark. I just want that moonlight in here. Oh, we've got a nice cave scene there, actually. It's quite moody. If I can get a little bit closer to that water. Pixelation's not too bad at an angle. So we've got that. Centrally, it always it's a little bit. You, d you don't always want the thing central, but that'll do. So we've got that. Now let's have a look. First of all, fog density. We've got rid. Hmm. That little bit of blue fits in simply because we're at night time and it's blue. So that picks it out quite nicely. Now, go look. Cloud density. We've got cloud density back. So, the thing is, do you want it nice and clear? Or do you want the clouds to give it a little shape? It brings this in a little bit. It brings the darkness here, or the darker colour here, into this picture a little bit. But I don't think it's subtle enough. You can take that down up to that and you lose, you lose all. It just looks terrible because it's not very well done. So I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted to leave a little bit of mood in there. I do like the shape it's creating there as well. A sensual shape, sort of an S. Now let's try a different filter. Be interested to see what. Stock looks like. Mm. Green contrast isolation. Obviously, fall is too much. Filmic is too much. I think. I think we're gonna go with stock. See how it picks out the light. Very nicely. We're gonna go with stock on this one. Now. I'm going to just rotate through the times. It also darkens the image either side of that gap even more. Ooh. Now I'm looking at the shadows. The shadows are doing some really interesting things here. You've got this little bit appearing here. 
How far can we take that before it loses its shape? Oh. Oh. Look. You've got that shape there, and it's coming down there. It splits it up quite nicely. That is... Let me just see how far I can take that before I lose it entirely. think maybe the cloud without the cloud Ooh, that's a difficult one to decide I want a little bit of cloud I'm gonna try to have a little bit further now the shadow is coming back up again but this time it's more pronounced so I'm gonna take it back to what it was before I liked that little delicate touch. So I'm taking it back to what it was before, which was there. And I believe we've got ourselves a picture. Now, can we get any closer? And there it is. One framed picture. And that is very nice. I do like that one. So, there's your framed picture in a cave. And like I said, you don't have to use caves, but caves are really good for framing. They focus the eye. There's nothing better than a cave to focus the eye on a feature. Now I need the night time. So I'm going to stop it here and, start and fly over to the night time side. So where we are, the hood has turned itself back on. Or am I able? I've forgotten to turn it off. Never mind. And I haven't got ages because the light might come any time and I'll lose the torch, so I need to show you straight away. But this is my torch trick. There's lots of ways of using it. Directly is a good way of doing it. And up. And you pull back once you've got the camera there and you've highlighted the tree. Now it doesn't matter what time of day it is, it still highlights that tree. So you can create some nice, uh, some, some nice strange effects like that. But one of the things I like to do is get up in a tree and aim the torch downwards. It doesn't always work in everything, but it sometimes creates another worldly look. Just a little bit different. So we've got that, and we've got that. And now look at that. See how even at the dead of night, it just makes that, it just picks that tree out. Just makes that tree look a little bit more of the feature. There's no doubting that is the main focus of the photo, and the rest is dressing if you like it also uh, like I said the, be the thing is the beans have been broadened a bit you can't quite use it in the same way so we'll try doing it a slightly different way we'll take these flowers are interesting so maybe I'll take these flowers in to just make these the features up to the tree now we've brought that flowers out a little bit more maybe that up one there instead. Now that is quite nice. It's quite otherworldly. It's not going to work bright now. Uh, bright. It's. Uh, you see? Do you see it? How that just brings that feature out? If you then take the fog right up you can isolate that tree even further but it's not the perfect example like I said I'm doing this because I'm going to run out of light I'm going to wait the defaults I'm going to just play around with this a little bit 
You still get it highlighted. The tree is still highlighted slightly. Even though it's daytime. I mean, I've always... I keep saying... A nice side view is always nice as well. I mean, you can get the trees, you can get the light coming through that tree, and it doesn't affect it. It still has that highlight on it, even in broad daylight. And night time, I think, is a little bit too much there. You've got a bit of moonlight there, which is nice, but a little bit too much. I don't particularly like flat top trees. But I think that is quite nice. So I'll cycle through the daytime. Time of day. <sighs> I went a bit too fast. I like the way that light just caught that rock. just separates it too much. This, is a little, this line's a little bit too bold, but it's still nice. We'll try a different filter too. It'll be interesting to see what the isolation does on this. See, that's... I like... I do like that, but it's a little bit artificial. It's a too obvious you've used the light on that works great with mushrooms obviously you know I like that I do like that the sun is right there and that's a bit corny let me move that sun off picture a little bit right so we've got that now default filter. Vibrant is too much as usual. Fog. I want to see what isolation looks like. Stock is too much on this. Green. Isolation. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, I don't really want to change the time of day. Fall. That is quite nice. Filming is too much. Retro. Default filter. So I'll take that picture not brilliant but it gives you an example of what I mean with the torch I'll show you another one in a sec so that's the picture taken so let's find something else just to give you another example I mean that is a nice picture up by itself angles are always nice it's weird because I don't know why but I prefer from left to right going down as opposed to from from the right to left going down I don't know why I don't know why it's just something it works for me more I don't know why I forced myself to, to do it the other way otherwise all my shots would be from left down to the right but angles are great, lines are great. Long as they're consistent, long as they add to the picture and they're not just there. I mean, that is, talking of frames earlier on, you know, that's not a bad frame. We've got a bank here, we've got a bank here, and we've got that there. So if I wanted to uh, highlight this section here in a second, I'm losing the light. I'm losing the flaming light, and I've lost the light. Ah oh, well, never mind. We'll go back to framing. But you've got a frame here. You've got a frame of sorts, just there, and you've got something to lead you, lead your eye into the picture. You know, I'm not going to take a picture. I'm just showing you. I think one example of a torch is enough. You can use your own flipping creativity to come up with lots and lots of uses for that. Some of my best pictures have used that technique. But like I said, I've not used it since the update. It's not that I won't use it, it's that it's not as subtle as it used to be. The beam has been broadened so it highlights a lot more of the area. 
So therefore I use it a lot less. It looks more obvious I'm using it now. Can't really do much about that. Can't complain about that either, really. I mean, a torch is meant to be a torch. It's not meant to be a photo aid. I just use it as a photo aid. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. This is quite a nice planet, actually. Loads and loads of possibilities here. I tend to wander around a lot, though. I'm just, all I'm looking for the shapes, interesting shapes, and sense of a something to lead the eye into the picture, as I've said before, and possibly a frame. It doesn't have to be a cave, it's just that caves are my favourite frame. Always nice. You know, that's too messy. There's too much going on in that picture. Avoid those sort of pictures. If you look at it, you've got all sorts of pictures. All sorts of things in the way. You've got that thing in the distance. You've got this rock here. You've got that rock coming over there. You've got this here. You've got this grass here. All these flowers here. You've got this strange rock here. And you've got that monstrosity there. That is way too fussy. Way too fussy. The eye has nothing to focus on. Nothing. You want something for the eye to focus on. But, I think that one, like I said, that one example is enough. That one example is enough. You, know, you just take the idea and run with it. If you've seen my, if you've seen my little fairy enclave with the plant in the alcove with the textures on the cave walls, that was done by standing on the top and aiming down with the torch. But that was the old torch. It would illuminate far more. I managed to just pick out the top to make it look like it was the fungal the fungus itself giving off the light. Not quite as subtle now, but you can still do it. You know, there's another potential frame. There's another potential frame. And we've got our nice little detail, our colour in the foreground to play with, as I've said before. So I hope that's helpful. These are not perfect examples. I can only apologise for that. But like I said, time limiting. I don't really want to spend hours and hours and hours going through it when it, I'm just demonstrating what to do, not necessarily trying to show off and take the perfect picture. I hope you appreciate that. And thanks for watching. I will say au revoir. Have a good one.